everybody, this is Brandon with Common Motor. That's common-motor.com on the internet. And today we're working on CT90 or Trail 90. And we're gonna show you how to do a valve adjustment. Stay tuned. So valve adjustments uh, are you know, part of what I call regular tune-up maintenance items on these bikes. Um, the cam chain adjustment, valve adjustment, ignition timing are kind of the three core pieces of uh, tune-up stuff along with an oil change. Now, uh, Honda publishes valve adjustment intervals for this engine at every 3,000 miles. I think that is too big of an interval. Uh, Oil changes on this bike are at a thousand miles, and I feel like at a thousand miles we do all the tune-up stuff, including the valve adjustment. Because if you've ever ridden one of these little bikes and you're you're on the gas, you realize that they run hard and they run fast, and so adjusting things more frequently is not going to hurt uh, versus letting it go longer. So again, for me, it's a thousand miles. We're going to go find the compression stroke on the engine right now, and because uh, that's where our adjustment needs to be. Uh, right now, we do have a T mark lined up with. Our, our index mark, our index mark is at the three o'clock position here on the coil and our T mark would be top dead center where the F mark would be fire, ignition fire. Uh, so I'm gonna put my finger over the spark plug hole. Get to take the spark plug out and I'm gonna turn the engine over counterclockwise and I'm gonna find the spot where we're on compression. I'm turning the engine here. I'm not feeling anything on my finger. So that would be the exhaust stroke. So we were actually in the right spot to begin with. We verify and I'll start to feel, yeah, I feel the pressure on my finger now. Tss, 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 that's how it feels. And then, so that's gonna be top dead center for compression stroke on the engine. So prior to the, the cam chain adjustment, we were wiggling this back and forth and we were doing it actually on the exhaust stroke. That means the exhaust valve was open and we had some spring pressure on it. Uh, we were filling the rotor turn, but our advanced mechanism up here was not turning. I took this cover off so we can see it. Now, because there's no stress on the valves, because we're on a compression stroke, this will move freely, but this is gonna move in sync with it, whereas before this would move and that would stay put. So you notice that I can move that with my finger pretty easy, but the, the advanced mechanism will spark moves in sync with it. Whereas before that would stay put and that was, had a lot of slop in it. We're gonna start with the exhaust valve. Um, it doesn't really matter, intake valve, exhaust valve, it's gonna be the same on this engine. And another way to help verify if your valves are kind of in the right spot to begin with is I can actually take the valve and I can wiggle it. I mean, we'll go side to side this way. And we're gonna hear that there's no spring pressure on it because if it was too tight, you wouldn't be able to do that. You know, go up to the intake, do the same thing right there. So we're probably not in a bad spot, but we're gonna go ahead and adjust them anyway, uh, since we're here. Our, our valve adjustment uh, is gonna be for two thousandths of an inch. That's 0 0.002 inch. And we're adjusting between the tip of this little screw adjuster here and the top of the, uh, top of the valve stem. We're gonna need a nine mil. Break that jam that loose, break it loose like that. Back it off a little bit. And then this adjuster screw has this little square head on it. And we have a little special thing for Hondas that have the square head adjuster nut. Um, very common on uh, the smaller bikes. So, I mean, we can do that by hand, but we can kind of back off my fingers for now. You, you need this wrench. I'm trying to do this with an with an adjustable wrench is like impossible. So uh, I like to do what's called, I call an overshoot method when adjusting the valve. So our spec is 2 thousandths of an inch. Um, I'm gonna go one size bigger. I'm gonna go 3 thousandths of an inch. Uh, the reason I do that is because a tight three and a loose two are pretty close, but when it comes to a mechanical valve system like this, I'd rather err looser than tighter because if the parts are too tight, you can cause camshaft damage or rocker arm damage or other damage in the valve train. If they're too loose, they just make a lot of noise. Uh, the difference of a thousandth of an inch is not very much. So in, in this case, I'm gonna just go three thou over and that way I know I'm gonna be good for extra clearance. Also, we have to think about thermal expansion. You know, as this stuff heats up, you know, metal expands, 
Again, looser is better than tighter. Um, so we're gonna use a 3,000th feeler gauge here. I'm at the point where I'm pinching it and I can just feel some drag on it right there. And you notice how I just have the loose leaf as a feeler gauge. I don't have that, the bundle with me because that weight will change how it feels. And I'm just using my fingers here to move back and forth. There should be just a bit of drag on there. So we're good with that. And I just literally just turn that with my fingers until it touched and then I'll bring up that. So jam that there. Sometimes you can do it with your fingers. Sometimes you gotta be uh, dynamic. Here's where it gets interesting. That's gonna go on. And then I gotta get uh, that one on. I wanna hold the this wrench in place, like hold the adjuster and then tighten the the nut just a little bit. Just snug like that, right there. The nut locks the screw in place by wedging it against the rocker arm. And let's see where we are. Our feeler gauge, oh yeah. There's a lot of feel there, a little bit of drag. So we're, we're like a three, you know, that, that'll work. All right, I'm gonna go up to the top and do the same thing on the intake valve. So we're not too tight here on our intake already, but we'll go ahead and just readjust it anyway. Take my nine mil box wrench, break the nut, adjust it out loose. Ooh, that was kind of tight. All right, back that off. You can back off the adjuster screw with my fingers. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. In this case, we can. Coming in with that, that three thousandths feeler gauge there. Right between the rocker arm and the top of the, the screw. I'm just gonna use my fingers here until I feel a touch. Right there, I feel a touch. A little, little bit of drag, I can feel it. I'm not like loose, but it, that's probably pretty good. Down with the nut right there. So again, I know I could use it. I did this one with my fingers, but you know you still need that wrench because sometimes you just can't. They're tight, you know. They've been got a bunch of goo on them or something. All right, I'm holding the center screw in place, tightening the nut. Feels good. I got a good bit of drag on there, so that's going to be probably it's a, a three. It's a, a little bit looser, but I'm okay with that. All right, uh, put the cover back on. Uh, if your O-ring is want to worn out, you might want to change the O-ring in there because it does seal. Um, the trick on these: just thread it down all the way until you feel it touch. And there's, you know, there's such a big cap don't need to use a lot. It's just a, just a hair more. Like I'm barely pulling on the wrench and I'm gonna stop. You don't wanna over tighten these, otherwise you'll break them. The exhaust ones in particular because the engine faces uh, down and some oil will collect in the cap here. So I'm gonna clean any little sludge out of there. And if that O-ring is, is in bad shape, go ahead and swap it out. All right, so we got our valve adjustment completed on our CT90. Uh, the next thing in line to do is gonna be the ignition timing, uh, which we have another video for that, so make sure you check that out. But I do wanna close with a couple of points, not points, not ignition points, we'll get to those <laughs> in the next video. Uh, a couple points about, uh, about uh, setting valves on these engines. One is the service interval. Uh, I like to do this every 1,000 miles. Uh, Honda specs 3,000 miles, but I'll do it with the oil change, uh, cam chain adjustment, and the ignition timing to follow at 1,000 mile uh, intervals because these little engines work hard and it doesn't take much for them to go out of adjustment. Uh, second point is uh, what I use is called the overshoot method where I'm going to have my valves adjusted a little bit looser versus a little bit tighter. And that's why I use that plus 1,000 feeler gauge 
because a tight three and a loose two are better than a tight two and a loose, uh, or a tight two and a loose one, you know? Uh, you don't, we don't want to be on that end of the spectrum. We want to be on the, the looser end of the spectrum because if the valves are too tight, you can break some parts and cause premature wear. If it's too loose, um, you can make noise. So but at a one thousandth difference is not that big of a deal. So error on that end of the equation when you're setting your valves. All right, so that wraps up the valve adjustment process on this CT90 engine. Remember, always error looser than tighter uh, when adjusting your valves. Tight valves can break parts. Loose valves, if they're too loose, will make noise. So looser ends where you want to be. And with that, this has been Brendan with Common Motor, as always, at common-motor.com on the internet. Make sure you follow us on social media. That's on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe to our newsletter through our website. And of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel down below. Make sure you ring the bell for notifications and we will see you next time.